Hey, let's talk about uh, today's vote. Um, long session for you guys. Mm -hmm. It seemed like it was a foregone conclusion it was going to pass, and it did. You voted against it. Why did you vote against the increase in the sales tax? Yeah, and I would say it was not necessarily a foregone conclusion. There was a lot of pressure put on folks even at the last minute. We had uh, county supervisors testifying that the governor, the county exec, were calling them personally yesterday. Uh, so there was, uh, I think there was not uh, a lot of confidence on the other side on this. Ultimately, we had three votes uh, no. Uh, and I can say a lot of folks... Uh, voted no for the right reasons. I, mean, I think a lot of folks voted yes for the right reasons, and I'm not casting aspersions on them. To my mind, the, the reason that I voted no is that sales taxes are regressive, right? We know that the poorest households in Milwaukee County are going to be paying seven times more as a percentage of their income than our richest households, and that's really inequitable. And that's not something that I could get behind unless we had a specific plan on how to spend those dollars that would actually uh, get rid of some of that inequity. But without the increase, those who are in favor of it say, those that need it most would have been really, really hurt. I mean, bus service would have went away. Other essential services would have been cut. Did that go into your equation at all? Absolutely, and, and that was a factor. Uh, those cuts do not happen until 2028. So we heard all these breathless things about how we're going to be selling off our parks and uh, you know closing senior centers and cutting half the bus routes. That is not something that happens in five months. That's something that happens in five years. So it was a little bit disingenuous to hear that rhetoric on the on the floor today when what I was advocating for was to step back for two or three months have a plan first uh, about how we would spend these dollars before we start taking them out of people's pockets. Did, Ryan is your assertion that time was on the city and county side to come up with a, a different sort of plan to help keep those essential services yeah. in working order? I, I, exactly so we we had time in fact we have uh, right now we have a 15.3 uh, percent 15.3 million dollar surplus we were looking at an $18 million structural deficit for the next year. That surplus goes up month after month because we kind of have conservative uh, ratings on those. There were not going to be significant cuts next year. We had a long time to figure out a plan. But what we've done is essentially taxing uh, this next year. We're going to tax Milwaukee County for another $80 million. Only about $40 million of that we're going to have to spend because it's money that's freed up from the pension. Uh, and we don't have a plan on how to spend that. My concern is that it's going to be business as usual. We're going to be funding the same things in the same ways. And now we're going to have a, a cash of uh, or a, a pile of cash on the table. We're going to have departments grabbing for it without a real good vision on where we go. Ryan Clancy is with us. So the city had strict parameters put in place on how they could spend the money put in place by the legislature. Were those guardrails not the same for what you guys can use the money for? Can you literally use it for anything, or are there guidelines and parameters? So uh, that's a complex question. Uh, essentially, the, the city had very specific things. Uh, yeah. They had to put it towards the pension. Anything they had left over, they put towards cops and, and fire and EMS, essentially. We still have some guardrails, like the, uh, the, the new dollars that we get have to go towards the pension. But uh, when we do that, we have about $40 million that we were putting into the pension that we can spend on other things. Uh, and the math there is pretty approximate. But uh, we're going to be taxing folks for $80 million. We're only going to have about half of that to spend. Uh, I just wanted to be sure that we're spending that wisely. So we're going to have a really interesting budget season coming up in these next, you know, next several months uh, where we debate where those dollars go. We saw an amendment today saying that we want to prioritize parks and transit. Yep. I had a, a, uh, a resolution that would have put that money very specifically towards transit. We have kind of a vague promise now, uh, but I guess we're going to hold their feet to the fire during this budget season. And what was the mood like in the room, Ryan? Because, you know, it, when the, the tax was announced and we all recognized that it was going to go up here in the city and the county, uh, city first, county now, it, it doesn't appear to be celebratory in any way. So mm -hmm. what was the mood like in the room? Uh, it was tense while we were discussing it. Afterwards, there was some relief, right? I mean, as as electeds, we were under a ton of pressure. People had their jobs threatened. People like literally had uh, had themselves threatened. And this has been going on for for weeks and months now. Even with me, like I was on the losing side. I, I did not want a sales tax. If I wanted a, a sales tax, I wanted to be sure we had a plan for it. There is a sense of relief that the vote is over, um, but also a, a sense of of real defeat here. This sales tax was touted to us as something temporary. So maybe we'll have it for 15 or 30 years. It will outlive all of us. I have yet to find a state or a, a local government that has put in a sales tax and then take, and then uh, taken it out or withdrawn it because once it's part of the budget, uh, you know, counties and, and cities and states depend on that revenue. Supervisor and Assemblyman Ryan Clancy is with us in the studio. I advocated from this microphone for months and months and months that this should have went to referendum. Yeah. I mean, this is a big deal. It affects people, like you said. And I believe it didn't go to referendum because it would have failed. 
What did you hear when you were talking to people about what they felt and what do you believe the likelihood would have been if this would have went to referendum? It would have failed spectacularly. You're totally right. I mean, every single poll that one of my colleagues did uh, came back uh, overwhelmingly opposed to a new sales tax. And what, what frustrates me is that our, our, you know, our city and county leaders, when they were sitting down at the table for this Act 12 thing, uh, you know, we, we ended up having a lot of really terrible policy provisions, kind of micromanaging what the city and what the county can do. They take away our ability to have referendums. They attack DEI, like really a lot of policy provisions that we don't see in other places. And then they spent all their political capital making sure that it didn't go to referendum and that it came to us because they knew damn well that there was no way that the, the people of Milwaukee County or the people in the city of Milwaukee would have passed this if it had gone to a popular referendum. He is County Supervisor and uh, State Assemblyman Ryan Clancy. Busy day for you, long day for you. Appreciate you joining us in the studio. Thank you, Ryan. We appreciate Thanks it. Thanks so much, Jeff.